So I got this adjust a bench uh, probably nine years ago um, in a shop that I was building up north and ended up moving and I've never put this adjusted bench together so this is going to be uh, this next project. So let's go ahead and unpack what we have in the adjusted bench. And this is one heavy box. Styrofoam packing. Really, I mean, really dense fiber styrofoam. Okay. We got a hardware package. There's two paddles. for the instructions now this box has been moved multiple times we've had one of our dogs chew on it so it may not be in here but I could probably get online and find a set of instructions but let's look in the packet see all in nuts and bolts basically has the two paddles. And we're going to have to get online and take a look to see if we can find instructions on putting this thing together. Hi everyone. Hey, this is Frank. And I thought I would do a completion video here of a, um, a bench that I've been wanting to make for years. Um, and finally got it accomplished here this summer uh, in between some other projects you know how it goes outside mowing lawns so on and so forth and but uh, I've got it completed and so let me just do a walk around and kind of describe what I did and um, and then I'll I'll uh, show you the actions of some of the of the uh, bench vices uh, but this is uh, a start off with the base it is um, the uh, Noden adjust a bench um, it's uh, I've, I bought this uh, at a show in Binghamton New York probably about nine years ago and uh, I finally uh, had an opportunity amongst several different moves to finally uh, get it put together uh, in the shop that I'm trying to um, get completed here so um, adjust a bench is, is pretty slick. Uh, those two legs actually uh, adjust uh, up and down. 
Uh, they've got a foot pedal there that you can uh, press on and then you grab the edge of your bench and you can lift it up to uh, a multitude of different heights. So if you are working on a project that is uh, requires uh, uh, like a cabinetry and you can bring this adjusted bench down pretty low uh, in order to uh, accommodate the tall workpiece that you're working on or if you wanted to bring it up really high because it's something small and you don't want to bend over on your back you can do that too. So uh, uh, one of the options with the adjusted bench is to uh, get, they have I think three different size uh, frames that you can put on with uh, casters. Uh, you have to go and kind of uh, grab your wrench, uh, tighten up the caster, uh, wheels go down, and then your uh, adjusted bench is mobile, which is kind of slick. I intend to keep it in one location. Uh, but it's nice to be able to move it out of the way without scratching up or, gr or dragging it uh, along the shop floor. So uh, adjust the bench is basically the, uh, the kit is the two ends that you see. Um, uh, the center pieces that tie the two ends together is something that you have to purchase. Um, I ended up uh, getting uh, the runners, I had some one inch thick stock, which is what it calls for. Uh, that's made out of red oak. Um, and then there's also a couple, you have to take four different uh, threaded rods. Um, you have to mill that, that runner and get the threaded rods inside. And that's how you attach the two adjust a bench ends to each other to create um, the base of a bench. Okay. Now, um, the bench top, you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, I uh, didn't want to just buy a bench top that was pre-made. Uh, being a woodworker, um, I wanted to create the, the bench top myself. Uh, I looked at maple and um, a, a couple other hardwoods, but I really ended up going with ash. Uh, mainly because the supplier that I have for rough lumber uh, the maple didn't look that great. Um, I didn't want to wait. Uh, so um, I ended up getting, uh, what was it, uh, eight, no, 12 quarter stock. And I ended up getting it all in ash. So what you see here in the, in the bench top was uh, basically all, all uh, rough lumber. So I ended up uh, joining it and planing it. Um, the boards, when I put them together, were approximately two inches, two and, a, two and an eighth. I didn't care too much about the width of, the, of these boards, whether they were exactly the same. Um, but the thickness is, I tried to get the maximum thickness I could. I got three inches out of it, uh, just shy, about an eighth inch shy, about two and seven eighths inch. Um, and that was perfect for what I was looking to do. I wanted a, a really beefy, heavy table. Um, after I did that, uh, I, I ripped them down to those two inches, two and an eighth inch, uh, right around that range. Uh, ended up doing uh, three different glue ups on this table. Um, one glue up in one section, another glue up in the middle, and then the third glue up uh, was here on the end. And then after those three were done, I, put, I was able to put them through my thickness planer and then joined up the whole thing together. Now when I I did the boards. Um, I did use uh, biscuit joinery uh, about every foot um, with every board. And why I did that was mainly to uh, keep the surfaces from um, moving all over the place when you're doing the glue up. Now, uh, if you haven't, uh, if you've ever done a lot of boards like this before, you have a, a risk that the, glue, the boards can move uh, while you're gluing it up. Uh, it's a pain trying to get it into the right position. So it took uh, a lot of time to do the biscuit joinery, but it was well worth the time. So uh, the dimensions again, uh, this is uh, just shy of three inches thick. It's three feet wide uh, and six feet long. And I pretty much maximized the board um, that, um, uh, that I got that was uh, all rough lumber. Okay, and then I ended up uh, drilling all the uh, three-quarter inch holes um, for the dogs, um, for both the face vise and for uh, the end vise. Now, I, I went with the Veritas 
uh, vices. Um, I think they're excellent quality. They're a little bit on the pricey side, uh, but I had actually these two Veritas kits for about 10 years as well and was finally able to kind of pull it all together with the uh, Noden adjust bench So let me go ahead and uh, get my camera um, put on to uh, a tripod and I'll kind of show you some of the actions of the adjust bench as well as the uh, the uh, Veritas uh, twin screw vise and also the Veritas vase vise Each end works on their own um, up and down movement. So if you want the bench to go up or you want it to go down, you go to one end, and get ready to hold it, push your foot on the pedal, then you drop it down. Go to the other side. Basically do the same thing. Here. I'm going to take her all the way down. And that's the lowest that the bench goes. And if you take a look at it, you know, we're looking at 29 inches. That's with a three inch top. So it goes down to 29 inches low. So here you can pretty much um, do just about any kind of cabinetry that you want to do. Um, if you've got a, a big box that you need to work on, uh, need to get the details, you can go ahead and and put it on here and be able to work and really not have any kind of uh, issues with having to uh, put it onto the floor um, on an uneven surface. Okay? You want to raise it back up, you don't need the foot pedal, you just start ratcheting it up one end at a time, a little bit at a time. On the other side. Let's see how high we can get. Pretty high. It's just shy of three feet, so it goes the whole width of my of my tabletop. 
And um, the instructions are, are, are pretty good. It jumps around a little bit because they start talking to you about attaching it to one of the Veritas' uh, uh, tabletops. I chose not to, I made my own. So you have to kind of go back to the back section and uh, see the instructions for uh, do, uh, attaching this to a bench that you're making. But with the uh, Veritas twin screw vise, the, um, in order to open up the vise, you do have to turn the screws to get them open as compared to the uh, face vise, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty smooth running vise. Um, they have two uh, stainless steel pins uh, that are sitting approximately half an inch above the screws. So if you've got a piece of wood that you want to put in here in your vise, you can go all the way down through the mouth, um, or you can uh, put it down onto the steel pins and, um, and you won't have to worry about your piece of, uh, of woodworking touching the uh, greasy uh, screws. Okay. And again, um, you know, dog holes to put on to uh, uh, the ends of the vices here, as well as the end of the table vise to take it down so I can put a board along the side and, and be able to hold it down pretty good. Okay, so we'll close her up. and tight. Also has a, uh, a, a position here where you can release one side so if you wanted to clamp something of an irregular shape you can actually do that. You can, you can tilt your uh, face um, of this clamp in order to accommodate the uh, piece of work that you're working on. Over here now is the Veritas uh, face vise and um, it too you can I have to lock it. You can bring it in bring it out with a screw, okay? Uh, if you want to do a kind of a speed, you have a mechanism here to release the, uh, uh, the engagement to the screw and pull it out, okay? Uh, when you get it out, you can go ahead and put your piece in, bring it down, lock it in place, goes back to being a screw vise and you can go ahead and, and put your, your item in there clamp it on down. This is a, a really nice vise. It, it bolts to the bottom of the table so of course when you're when you're using your um, your dogs in your table you got to be careful on your positioning so you're not drilling into an area where you can't drill through and, and, and put a dog. And I'll show you uh, just some of the devices that I have for the table. Of course, uh, these are these are uh, all part of Veritas. Um, uh, they've got the four inch and the two inch uh, dog. And uh, what's nice is they have a, a spring loaded mechanism onto it. So when you put it in, it doesn't just fall right through and land on the floor. Uh, they also give you these uh, nice little rubber, rubber feet that you can put it on uh, to your um, dogs so that you don't actually mar up the your wood that you're working on okay and if you wanted to you could go ahead and keep your dogs in there and just bring it all the way down to the bottom you never see them you need them pop them back through and go ahead and utilize using them uh, and the two inch does the same thing okay um, Outside of those dogs, uh, I did also uh, get um, one of their uh, clamping mechanisms that you can actually uh, put it down inside. Oops, sorry. And you can bring it on down, uh, position it, have a piece of wood that you want between two dogs since there's no vice here. You can close her up, bring it down even more, close it up and clamp anywhere onto this table uh, with this type of vise. And lastly, this thing's just amazing. Um, it's a hold down vise, so it has a serrated edge uh, on, for the shaft. You can put it just about anywhere, um, put a piece of wood down, 
and tighten this down and it just, your piece of wood won't go anywhere. You can bring it up or bring it down um, to roughly, um, I think it has about a one inch throw. But these are great because you can put them in any one of the holes and you can go ahead and bring it on down and tighten down anything that you need tightened on the board, on the bench top in order to do your work. Pocket hole screws or anything else like that where an extra set of hands uh, come in handy. So uh, that's, uh, that's my table. That's the adjuster bench. Um, um, it is one heavy, <laughs> one heavy table. I tend to build things pretty uh, rock solid. I'm uh, pretty finicky on my woodworking. I uh, love doing finished woodwork. And uh, this thing is going to help me uh, tremendously to be able to work on projects without having to bend over um, and be able to handle it uh, on a, a bench of this nature. This is going to be nice. So um, that's about it for the adjusted bench. Um, it was fun to build. Um, this thing weighs uh, a, probably like a Sherman tank. Um, it's going to get a, a lot of good use here in the shop for me. Uh, it'll be those extra set of hands that you need when you're trying to hold down a piece of wood. And um, it's going to be great to be able to not have to bend over with your back and trying to work on some different projects. You can just go ahead and grab one end of the bench, raise it or lower it to the height that you need, and uh, it's pretty accommodating. So that's it, uh, that's it here. Um, this is uh, my second video I've made of, uh, of a project um, uh, for my shop. Uh, right now I'm still putting the shop together. Um, and my next project is to start working on cabinetry uh, for the radial arm saw and the chop saw. And, um, and then start doing other cabinetry around here for hardware and tools. Uh, once my uh, cabinetry is done and I'm pretty well satisfied with the shop layout, then I'll definitely do a video and kind of take everybody around the, uh, the shop and kind of show you how I, how I set it up. Um, this is multiple shops for me uh, based on the different moves that I've made. So I've taken a lot of the different uh, uh, good points and bad points that I learned from the shops that I've had, plus a lot of the great videos that are out there on YouTube from um, a lot of woodworkers that I respect and, and watch their videos and kind of uh, did a compilation of, uh, of what would work for me. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it here. Um, thanks for joining me. 